Lord, may anyone else who has cancer be healed. Like Robert, let that testimony go around the world. His miracle. Let people draw faith in you again today to believe you to heal them from tumors and cancers. I couldn't stop crying just hearing this testimony again afresh. Because when I pray for the sick, my heart beats just right. I have compassion for the sick. That's my destiny. That's my assignment. It's a healing shepherd. When people are going through the greatest battle of their lives in sickness, to be there for them, to be a solution from the throne of God. To release aid and help and grace. Softly, musicians. I'm talking. Pay attention. Don't stop playing. Play softly. When someone needs help and they are sick, and they need that grace, and they need that love through that time, God has created and raised up healing shepherds in generations. And that's what he called me in a dream, that I'm a healing shepherd to America. And when I come out of here, we will start the biggest crusades under that banner and authority and title of the healing shepherd. There are many more like Robert that are sick and they're going to die if we don't do something about it. This is why I'm training a school of people to walk in signs and wonders. It ain't just about me doing it. I want others to do it. Moses' spirit fell on 70 and they prophesied just like him. Although they didn't outrank him, they still were used to help carry the load to minister to the people. And that's where we must raise up enough laborers and disciples. And that's what this campus is, you see. Come on, give God a shout of praise for this campus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. What an amazing feat. What an amazing miracle, a marvel this campus is. And I want to say one more thing that, that Linda said, which is prophetic, because she is a prophetess. She's always been a prophetess from the time I've known her years ago. She always has a word and she has fire in her belly. But she said something that God opened up my understanding and then the drone camera got it and I said, that's what this is. She said she was, she started saying, well, this tabernacle around here. She called out there on the grounds a tabernacle. A tent, and I, I didn't get it at first. And then the drone shot came in and it showed a certain angle. And that's what that trust thing looked like, the tabernacle. I said, this is why God told me this is a tabernacle in the middle of the desert where it's hot in Houston. <laughs> and in that desert they did the tabernacle. And there were marvels and miracles that happened in the wilderness. <laughs> Woo! This is just a modern day style tabernacle of the New Testament. Bringing the ancient and the new. If you look at the drone from, not the angle they got it now, but from over the building, uh, the other side. In the daytime, they got such a shot, and I said, oh, God, I see this. But you got to see it from the air, because it looks long, just like the tabernacle God told Moses to build. You got to understand, God told me to build this, I mean, in a spare of the moment, in just months. He just dropped it in my heart, the vision, put up this thing. It's the tabernacle, y'all. That's what it is. <laughs> because we have not yet built or bought the huge home, the 100,000 seat Coliseum that God told us to build. We are still on the way there. We are in the wilderness. We are in the promised land. Jam and I, but some of y'all are also in the wilderness. <laughs> but this is a sign that we are going to a more stable place to build a house for God. This is a tabernacle right now on our journey where we are. It's what's called the tent of meetings. It's when God set up tents and curtains and stuff. That's all you see out there is like a tent of curtains and stuff like that. <laughs> that was prophetic. That was prophetic. Linda, that was amazing. You prophesied what this whole thing was today. If that drone camera would get it from the right angle, you can see that it looks like a tabernacle. When it's high up and from us, they had it today. I saw it. It came straight in after she said it. I said, oh my God, that's what it looks like. When Moses built the tabernacle, it was long just like that with curtains up. I don't think it was quite this high, 30 feet in the air. <laughs> and they had the gate called the way. Those where the billboards flare out, that's the gate. Now I understand why I told y'all to come in with praise. God told me when we first did it, y'all to come in with praise. It says, into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Uh, it was just all coming to me. I said, oh Lord, this is the tabernacle. This is a tabernacle in the... In this generation, God told me to just build up marbles. I'm not saying it's the actual tabernacle. I'm saying the same thing God did with Moses in the wilderness, he is doing right now with this thing. Well, anyway, I'm going to go and enjoy my birthday celebration and let y'all take it over. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. They, they got to be a little farther back. Be a little farther. Yeah, no, a little farther back behind the building. A little bit, because it'll show. Have that drone move back. Back over the building more further. Do y'all see that? When you see it in the daytime, that's what it is, a tabernacle, guys. Joseph, what do you think about this? Houston. Yes, sir, Apostle. Apostle, we see it. This is so awesome. Like you said, so we, none of us caught that, but tonight, as you're explaining it, we see it, Apostle. This is a dwelling place. Like you told the, the meaning of tabernacle, it's a, a dwelling place of the presence of, a, of the Most High God. And uh, I remember even sharing with us, Apostle, how you're going to take these trusts and these, these banners across America, across the world. And, and we know that the tabernacle was a portable a dwelling place of God in the Old Testament. But we know that this is a, a, a new covenant, modern day Marvelic tabernacle where you do feel God's presence. You do feel the glory of God when you walk in here. It's, it's electric. In fact, when you see the whole campus from an aerial view, it's pretty much dark all around. You know, of course, the highway's right there. The people can see it from miles.
miles across. But this place lights up so gloriously, Apostle, all through Houston. And they say uh, when you fly in, because we're about 15 minutes from the airport, you see this place from the sky. The, the, the city set on a hill. The brightness of God's glory. Planes are constantly going overhead. And we know that they see it, especially at nighttime. They see God's presence. So it, it's so awesome. And it's beautiful to be here. But it's amazing. Well, Lord, I'm so thankful I obeyed you. Mariah, what you think about this? Sir, it is. It's amazing. It's incredible. And, you know, it's something going through that walkway. I know a lot of the students, including myself, you feel such an awe, like a reverence going throughout this entire place. So when you just make that correlation, I just, I'm on the side. I scream, I'm like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. But yes, sir, you feel it. You, you literally feel God's presence. And just in awe being a part and being here. That's amazing. And we're going to keep this up for a while. And you got to understand, I bought all of this. This is not rented. Maybe some of the lights are rented, but the trust, everything we did, most of everything is paid for. That's why it cost us a lot of money, this crusade. Amen. And that's why we need your support. I'm building this for the body of Christ to come and meet the Lord in the wilderness, to meet him at the tent of meetings like they did and see his glory.